multiply a decimal fraction by a single digit whole number, including using estimation to confirm the placement of the decimal point. Take a look at these three problems. How are these problems alike? Do you notice that they all have threes, ones, and fours as part of the problem? Let's use an area model to solve each problem. Here we have 4 multiplied by 3 tens plus 1 1. This is our first one we had there. 4 times 3 is 12. Talking about 12 tens. And 4 times 1 is 4. 4 ones. 12 tens, 120. 4 ones. 4, that gives us 124. For the second problem, that's 4 multiplied by 3 ones with 1 tenth. Four times three ones is twelve ones. Four times a tenth is four tenths. We write that out. Twelve ones with four tenths equaling twelve point four. Let's move that over. Our final problem. 31 hundredths, which breaks part into 3 tenths with 1 hundredth, multiplying it as 12 tenths, which is 1.2, and 4 hundredths. Adding those two numbers together, we get 1.24. So look how our products vary. Each product does have the digits 1, 2, and 4, and they're always in that same order. Do these products have the same value? Nope. 124 is different than 12 and 4 tenths is different than 1 and 24 hundredths. Here we have 5 and 1 tenth times 6. What is the smallest unit in 5 and 1 tenth? Right, tenths. How many tenths are this in this number? Right, 51 tenths. Let's multiply this by converting it to tenths. and we're multiplying by 6 then. 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30, so I have 306 tenths, which I can write in standard form as 30.6. This is reasonable to place our decimal point there because if this was just 5, our whole number 5, times 6, the answer would be 30. So this makes sense. So we placed our decimal point here for 30 and 6 tenths. You try to do this multiplication problem by using that smallest unit. What's that smallest unit there? Right, tenths. So write that out and solve it. Did you get 456 tenths? And then did you write that back in standard form? This does make sense, the way that I placed my decimal point, because 11, which was the whole number this would round to, times 4, does equal 44. Let's use hundredths now to rename 3 and 12 hundredths. 
that'd be equal to 312 hundredths. And we're still multiplying by 4. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. So I have 1,248 hundredths. And to place my decimal point, well, this is close to 3. 3 times 4 is 12. So our decimal number is 12.48. I also could have used an area model to be able to solve this. Here's the 4 I'm multiplying it by. And then it's 3 ones along with 1 tenth along with 2 hundredths. 4 times 3 1 is 12 ones with 4 tenths and then 4 times 2 is 8 and that's hundredths. So 12 plus 4 tenths plus 8 hundredths which does equal 12.48. So we should have multiple ways to be able to solve a problem and you should not and you should understand the area model and also using that smallest unit okay let's name this using the smallest unit smallest unit is now thousandths so I have 733 thousandths times 5 Step by step, 5 times 3 is 15, 5, regroup the 1, 5 times 3 again is 15, plus 1 is 16, 6, regroup the 1, and 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1 is 36. So I have 3,665 thousandths, which equals 3.665. where I'm placing my decimal point correctly for my product. This does make sense in that this decimal is closest, whole number is 1, and 1 times 5 is 5. One for you to try. Rename it to the smallest unit. Pause the video while you do your work. Renamed to the smallest place would be 5,632 thousandths times 4. And then you do your multiplication. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 more is 22. So that's thousandths. And then did you write it back in standard form? Check over your work. Our number here was close to 6, and I know that 6 times 4 is 24. That's why my answer is reasonable.